Hi, this is Model Shipwright Steve Prisky. See, I know I posted a video called HMS Snake, A Final View, but uh, on the way to delivering the ship, I talked, took her to the Golden Gate Bridge and did some photos and video, and they came out so good, I thought I'd take a moment to share this uh, last video with you. So let's call this HMS Snake an epilogue view. Um, anyway, uh, as you've been follow if you've been following the progress of the building of this three-masted ship model, it's taken me about uh, 1,800 hours to complete this plank on frame three-masted uh, ship of war from the 18th century. Uh, the HMS Snake was actually launched in 1797. Uh, she was the first kind of ship of her type. Uh, basically, she had no ornamentation. She was a flush decker, a single deck ship um, designed uh, for close in fighting. Now, the uh, ship model that I was contracted to build was from the Calder Craft kit. Uh, of the HMS Snake and 164th scale. As I said, it's a plank on bulkhead model, so I had to lay in bulkheads first and then put on two layers of planking. Now, one of the more interesting aspects of this ship model was that I was to copper the hull exactly like the real ship was coppered. Riveted copper plates were applied to the hull, uh, trimmed in place and so on. Uh, following that, uh, the ship was painted, and this is sort of interesting. I was uh, uh, inspired to use the paints provided by Calder Craft. Uh, by the, the ship model company because they're the actual paints that are used on the real HMS Victory today and the actual paints used on the HMS Snake back in 1797. These aren't ship model paints but these are the actual real paints used on the real ship so there's no guessing as to whether the colors are going to be accurate or not. Now another unusual feature of this ship model is that I took and gutted out the entire insides so that I could build out the below decks of the HMS Snake just like the real ship. So there's a cargo area, uh, an officer's quarter, and then I took lights and I put them underneath the uh, upper deck so that the inside of the ship actually is visible when you light it up at night. Now the heart of the HMS Snake is the fact that she uh, was armed with 18 carronades on a single deck. Uh, so this ship was one of the first kinds of ships used for close-in combat to finish off ships that had been harmed or, or damaged by the long-range cannons from the uh, traditional galleys, uh, uh, larger galleon-type ships. Now the theme for this particular ship model was a photograph that I found of the USS Ranger at the Azores in the middle of the Atlantic where she's replenishing. So in uh, this particular uh, display of the HMS Snake, she's also sitting in the Azores replenishing citrus deck of the ship model. You'll see that there's a bunch of citrus barrels and actually I've got a couple of them being lowered into the lower hatch or through the lower hatch into the uh, a lower part of the ship, which of course, as I mentioned before, is completely built out. Uh, one of the fun, funner part of this uh, ship model was that I was uh, uh, contracted to also build her with crew members on board the ship. So throughout the crew and the, uh, up in the rigging and up in the tops and so on, you'll find uh, small figurines uh, as well as, of course, the uh, officers about the deck. And then I've got a small scene right there in the mid deck that you see where there's a lime dealer, a citrus dealer from the Azores who's negotiating with the captain and the uh, marine first officer for the, uh, uh, the, the load of citrus. Now, you might notice another uh, uh, interesting feature and that is that I took one of the ship's boats, the uh, long boat on the ship, and I cut it right down in half after I built it as a uh, plank on frame ship uh, boat model and then I've displayed it in front of the main ship above the historic brass plaque. So when you view the ship model from the starboard side it looks like a completed uh, uh, ship's long boat but when viewed from the port side uh, you see the inner workings of uh, one of these uh, ship's long boats. So that makes sort of an interesting kind of a display and of course the trick was there to make sure that I got it right at the water line uh, with the uh, uh, copper plates that you see on the uh, hull of the ship. So uh, that's one of the trickier things. Uh, another thing is that all the wires that uh, are used to light up inside of the ship model come down through these two pedestals and go below the, uh, uh, the display base. And then I have uh, a battery pack that they plug into so that the owner of this model can switch it on and off. And then, of course, uh, looking through the deck gratings, uh, which are removable, you, uh, you can look in and see the... Uh, uh, the contents of the lower hull. Here, here of course, I'm showing uh, the uh, uh, port side of the ship's longboat where you can see all of the in inner details. Inside of there, of course, I've got uh, uh, water casks and uh, uh, oars, uh, the ship's uh, uh, boat masts, uh, along with sails and so on, and an anchor and anchor chain. Uh, sort of fun because I got to photograph the, the model and, and do some video here uh, of her down at the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, 
So with the water back, uh, water in the back background, it makes sort of an interesting uh, display. Uh, as I mentioned before, there were over 700 copper plates used uh, to on the hull of the HMS Snake ship model, just as there were on the real ship. Uh, now the anchor that you see hanging there, actually that's meant to be displayed, sitting down on the display shut up, so I've got it hanging on the edge of the hull there until it was de delivered to my client. Um, as we can see here on the uh, stern part of the ship, is the captain's gig, uh, and that's hanging from some, from some davits. That's a little addition that I made to the uh, plans that were called for in the Call to Craft ship model. Uh, now we're starting to take a look at some of the crew members on the uh, HMS Snake. You can see that on the raised quarter deck, there's a uh, junior officer yelling a uh, crewman up in the tops of the main mast, and there's also uh, a Marine Corps lookout. The, and then on the forward mast, I've got two Portuguese sailors. Now, the way that you know that they're Portuguese sailors is that they're wearing red beanie caps, and that was a, a tradition uh, back in the 1700s, 1800s. Uh, you always knew your Portuguese or their knit caps. Um, on the stern of the ship, uh, we've got the uh, first officer right there having a little discussion with the helms. There's, and then up on the raised quarter deck, there's a, a sailor who's tightening up some of the rigging uh, going to the spanker boom. And then uh, about mid-decks, there's this uh, a little uh, convergence of uh, the captain of the ship, the uh, Marine First Officer, along with the, uh, um, the uh, uh, fruit agent, the citrus agent from the Azores. And then uh, there's also these two crew members that are lowering uh, uh, some of these uh, citrus casks into the lower hold. Uh, here you see uh, I've got the... Uh, gratings removed so that you can see down into the lower hold where they're, they're full of cargo and they're also built out the officers quarters are to the back of the ship right there you can see the uh, doors going into the uh, various uh, quarters for the officers as well as the uh, grand salon and the stern of the ship where of course the captain's quarters were at. Unfortunately in this still photograph you see the grating in place so it's hard to imagine that cast going actually below decks but here you can see how uh, indeed the below decks are built out. Be sure to visit my website, tallshipsofsanfrancisco.com. It's on the home page. You'll see links to hundreds of photographs and videos of this ship model during construction. I took and drilled holes through the hands of one of the sailors so that I could thread the uh, uh, downhaul line right through his hand so it looks like he was hauling down on that uh, cargo barrel. Uh, here we're taking a look forward on the uh, deck, forward deck hatch, and then the, uh, there's two sailors at the forward fife rail uh, pulling down on some of the rigging from the foremast, as well as there's a couple of crew members climbing the foremast. The junior officer coming up from below decks. See there's a marine sentry standing at the uh, access hatchway, armed with a boarding pike. Here's another look at one of the uh, crew members on the raised quarter deck and another one of the sailors who's tightening up some of the rigging on the quarter deck. Up here we can see one of the uh, lookouts on the main mast top and he's accompanied by a marine who's looking out on the uh, starboard quarter of the ship. Moving forward to the foremast we see there are a couple of other sailors but these are not marines or military guys. These are actually Portuguese sailors that signed on while the ship was at anchor in the Azores. So this will bring to a close the uh, final overview, the epilogue, if you will, of the HMS Snake ship model. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, follow along with all the videos I've posted on YouTube. And like I said, be sure to visit my website, tallshipsofsanfrancisco.com, where is on the home page, lower right of the home page, you'll find links to both the videos and the hundreds of still photographs that were made during the construction of the ship model. Uh, take your time to look them over and enlarge them on your screen. Feel free to print them up if you like. Uh, again, this is Steve Prisky, Model Shipwright, signing off. It's been a pleasure to have everybody follow along with the progress of this uh, three-masted uh, man of war from uh, 1797.